In 1990, just 10% of the U.S. population uses marijuana. By 2002, 11% uses an increase of just 1% in 12 years. Now, during that same time period, 1990 to 2002, there's a 3% decline in arrests for all crime nationwide. But arrests for marijuana possession increase 113%. Arrests in New York City alone increase over 2,400%. 80% of those arrested are non-white. Police Commissioner William Bratton's CompStat program, which rewards police for pot busts, is widely credited with providing at least some of the incentive. Another possible reason? It was part of the goal originally envisioned by President Nixon I'm afraid he'll catch me picking my nose. when he created the DEA. Whether due to bad luck, I got it wrong. racism, greed, lust for power, or more likely a combination of all four, minority communities certainly seem to have been disproportionately impacted. But by the 1990s, there's increasing pushback from the medical community and people who need marijuana for reasons that have nothing to do with simply getting high. In 1997, Terry Parker becomes Canada's first legal medical cannabis user after he's given an exemption to grow and use his own medicine. In July 2002, Canada's Supreme Court orders Parliament to rewrite Canada's cannabis laws to allow for proper medical access. If they refuse, all Canadian prohibition laws will be struck down. The Liberal government hires prairie plant systems to grow medical cannabis, but after spending almost $7 million to grow their first crop, the government orders it destroyed. They tell the grower to start over with just two strains to make standardization easier. Two! Ha ha! Also in 2002, a five-volume report instigated by Conservative Senator Pierre-Claude Nolan concludes... Unfortunately, almost a century ago, the enactment of prohibition laws was made possible through public misinformation. We have examined science and studies in depth. First, we really need to get our act together in many ways, prohibition is a cop -out. The Nolan Report declares that scientific evidence overwhelmingly indicates cannabis is substantially less harmful than alcohol and should not be treated as a criminal issue. Well, duh. It recommends cannabis be fully legalized for everyone over the age of 16 and that all criminal records for possession be erased. Excellent! <laughs> the Liberal government ignores the report. La, 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 la. I am not listening to you. By August 2003, the new buds from Prairie Plant Systems are finally ready. But the government now says they contain too much THC and orders the potency lowered by shredding the buds and mixing in the stock. The low potency shredded mix is freeze dried, irradiated and sold by mail order for $5 a gram. On the brighter side, in 2004, judges in the U.S. finally overrule the DEA and force them to allow hemp-based foods from Canada into the country. We'll let you digest that for now, and we'll wrap up Growing Pains in our final episode next week. Hopefully you can stomach it. <laughs>